visual pathway here if you see uh, this is a nose for representation purpose this is the visual field okay so on either side of the nose you have the eyeball which is mainly concerned with the visual vision so now here if you see visual field for each eye this is the visual field for the right eye this is the visual field for the left eye for the right eye if you see uh, this is the nasal visual field which is very close to your nose and this is the temporal visual field clear yeah? now the light always travels in a straight line okay always remember the impulses or the light okay the light falls from the temporal visual field onto the nasal retina from the nasal visual field light falls onto the temporal retina because the see light cannot bend like this and come and fall onto the temporal retina okay because it always travels in a straight line so now we know the retinal fibers present on the nasal side they are getting the uh, the stimulus from the temporal field of vision so now this is the eyeball which is shown here since this half is closer to the nose we call it as a nasal retina and this is the temporal half of the retina in the retina mainly remember we all know the receptor for vision is rods and cones so if you can see here this is a rod this is a cone remember rods and cones synapses with a bipolar cell bipolar cell is a first order neuron in the visual pathway that synapses with the ganglion cell so what is represented here in this diagram is a ganglion cell remember that it's a second order neuron which is shown here so this is a ganglion cell starting from the nasal half of the eye field uh, from the retina this is from the temporal half of the retina so now when the axons of the ganglion cell passes the optic disc crosses the optic disc then we call it as optic nerve so it is nothing but optic nerve is made up of axons of the ganglion cell now once this passes continues to uh, go through the optic chiasma what happens is the nasal fibers cross over so you can see here the nasal retinal fibers are crossing over at optic chiasma chiasma meaning chi the chi stands for x alphabet in a greek letter greek letter where there's a crossing over so when we tell optic chiasma it is nothing but the crossing over so you can see here the nasal retinal fibers the ganglion cell axon is crossing over but the temporal fibers they go on the same side so next after optic chiasma it continues as optic tract so optic tract has fibers from the contralateral nasal fibers and it has ipsilateral temporal fibers so just to meaning ipsilateral meaning the fibers coming from the same side so if you can see here this is the fiber from the right eye it passes through the right optic tract but the pink line no which is starting from the opposite eye it's a contralateral fiber so optic tract consists of ipsilateral temporal fibers contralateral nasal retinal fibers so this constitutes the optic tract which ends in the lateral geniculate body so what we have seen is this is one neuron which has started in the retina the ganglion cell okay that is ending in the lateral geniculate body so it is relaying in the lateral geniculate body which is a part of thalamus so thalamus we all know it is a subcortical relay center meaning all the sensations whatever is going from the periphery to your cortex relays in the thalamus except your olfactory information okay so now as we know now visual impulses are relayed in the thalamus from the thalamus from the lateral geniculate body the third order neuron starts and carries the impulses to your occipital cortex area number 17 18 19 now if you see these radiations are called as optic radiations because they are radiating or spreading out okay from the lateral geniculate body to the calicrine fissure or area number 17 here now optic radiation is otherwise called as geniculo calicrine tract because the there's a calicrine sulcus here okay this is a calicrine sulcus uh, in and around the calicrine sulcus we have the occipital uh, cortical uh, visual cortical areas okay so from the lateral geniculate body impulses are coming to occipital cortex that's why we call it as geniculo calicrine tract area number 17 is a primary visual cortex 18 and 19 are called the association cortex association areas clear if you see optic tract also gives a uh, collateral to pretectal nucleus which controls the uh, pathway for light reflex okay which i'll explain in another video so just to summarize now remember the light falls from the temporal visual field onto the nasal retinal fibers from the nasal visual field onto the temporal fibers because light travels always in a straight line so the ganglion cell axons okay they form the optic nerve after optic nerve we have optic chiasma where the nasal retinal fibers cross over but temporal retinal fibers or the ganglion cell axons will not cross over 
so optic tract consists of ipsilateral temporal fibers and contralateral nasal fibers and they end in lateral geniculate body where third order neuron is starting so ganglion cell is a second order neuron so the first order neuron is your bipolar cell because your receptors for vision rods and cones no photoreceptor they synapse on the bipolar cell which is the first order neuron ganglion cell is a second order neuron which ends in the lateral geniculate body third order neuron is your optic radiation which ends in the occipital cortex area number 17 18 and 19 so the order to remember is always remember optic nerve optic chiasma optic tract and then optic radiation. Yes.